Thank you for tuning into Tag Church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We pray that this message will truly be a blessing to you today. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so by visiting us at www.tagchurch.net. Also, if you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to send them to the email request on your screen. We would love to partner with you in prayer. Now, I hope you are ready for a word from the Lord today. Let's get right into it, and God bless you. How many of you believe that God wants to release something into the earth this year? Come on, how many of you really believe God is, something's happening this year, do you believe that? I believe it. Something good is happening this year. But, you know, the, the, the important thing we need to understand about that is God is not going to do anything in this earth this year without your help. Come on, somebody. God needs you to do whatever it is he wants to do in this earth. I told you this a few weeks ago when I preached on uh, Mary and I talked about uh, spiritual birthing and, and, and I said how important it is that we understand that, that God uses us to release what he wants to do on the earth. Jesus taught us how to pray in the Lord's Prayer that, you know, as it is in heaven, so it shall be on the earth. And we looked at that sermon and, 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 and God just has not allowed me to move on from that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue in that direction today because I really believe, and I believe it maybe now more today than I did even last Sunday at this time or, or two weeks ago for sure, and that is I believe God has spiritually impregnated his church for one of the most greatest moves of God that we've ever seen. I believe in this church he has spiritually impregnated individuals in this room with anointings and with callings and with gifts. Things. Come on, somebody, with prophetic promises over your life, with plans and purposes. And I just believe that 2023 is your year to give birth to whatever God has placed on your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, 2023 is delivery year. It's delivery year. And what that means is this is your year to give birth to the promises, to the plans, to the purposes, to the prophecies, to everything God has spoken over your life, this is your year to give birth to that. Because the Bible says, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. What that verse tells me is God's got some things that he's planning on doing. You ain't even thought about it yet. You haven't even, it hasn't even crossed your mind. But it says God has prepared prepared them for those who love him. I'm telling you today, there's some things in the in the in the womb of your spirit that God is preparing to give birth to in 2023. I say, "Lord, go ahead and impregnate me and deliver it through my life." But you know, we always quote that eye is not seen, ear is not heard, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And many times we don't quote the next verse, which is verse 10. And verse 10 says this. Uh, look at the next verse. It says, then these things, what things? The things God's prepared. The things that has not crossed your mind. The things you've not even seen yet, but God's prepared. He says in verse 10, these things God has revealed to us through his spirit. God has revealed them. In other words, even though in the natural they've not crossed my mind, God is going to bring them to my spirit man. Are you following me today? Okay. God is going to, God's going to begin to show you things that maybe you would have never believed that God could do in your life or through your life, but because of the working of the spirit and because the spirit is searching and even, even searching the depths and the deep things of God, the Bible says here that God's going to reveal reveal those things to you. I believe what's going to happen this morning is God is going to speak to some folk in this room and reveal what his plan is for your life this year. And you better get ready because I has not seen nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for you. 
Now, talking about this vein of, of preaching, a few weeks ago when I preached on this topic, I shared with you five things about releasing the plans and the purposes of God that are in your life, releasing them onto the earth. Now, I'm not going to re-preach those, but I want to give you those five things real quickly again. Number one, they are always released onto the earth at an appointed time. You understand? I mean, you think about the greatest promise was given in the very beginning of the Bible, and that was the promise that Jesus would be born, and he's going to literally crush the head of the serpent, right? That was a promise that was recorded thousands of years before it was ever fulfilled, but there came a time where in Bethlehem, there was a woman by the name of Mary who would give birth to the greatest promise the world has ever known. Listen to me. I don't care if there's dreams, visions, and prophecies on your life that were spoken decades ago and maybe some you've even forgot about. There's an appointed time coming where God's going to bring those things to pass. Come on, somebody. Has God ever told you anything? Has God ever shared anything with you? Whatever he's told you, you can guarantee take it to the bank. It's going to come to pass. Number two, we talked about how these things are released through ordinary people. Come on, look down your row right now. There's a bunch of ordinary people. But hear me today, God loves to do extraordinary things through ordinary people. And this is the year that God's going to do supernatural things through very natural people. Number three, we talked about how it must be unadulterated, meaning it must be born purely of the Spirit, okay? Number four, it, and this, this is a very important one, when, when, when you're getting ready to release things into the earth, you might encounter closed doors. And you need, if you weren't here, you'll have to go back and listen to the message. I don't have time to re-preach all these. And number five, it has to be protected and it has to be nurtured. Now, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants to say some more about this today. On the topic of, if you're taking notes, the deposit within you is what I'm going to talk about today, the deposit in your life. And I'm going to teach today, and I'm going to save my voice, so if you need to hear a preacher shout to think he's anointed, you're in the wrong house today, okay? I'm going to save my voice and just talk to you. But I want you to take out some paper and write down some notes. I'm going to give you three things today. I'm not going to spend time, much time on the first or the third one. I'm going to spend the bulk of the time on the second one. So let me hit, hit, hit one real quick, and then we're gonna, we'll hit a few more. But before I get to those three things, I want, I, want to, I want to kind of lead the way here. And I want you to write this down, talking about the deposit in your life. The deposit in us determines what is birthed through us. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 12 and look at verse 33. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 33. Red letter, Jesus' is teaching here. And here is what... He says, I'm talking about this deposit has to be in you before anything can be birthed from you, okay? And what is in you is going to determine what, what you do birth. So Matthew chapter number 12, and uh, look at verse 33. It says this, either make the tree good and its fruit bad, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brought of vipers. Don't you love how Jesus talks to people? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever's in your heart comes out through your mouth. I don't need to be around you and listening to you very long to realize what your heart looks like. If all you ever do is negative and critical and complaining and griping and Listen, I know your heart is evil, and I don't want to be your friend. I'm not friends with negative people. Hear me today. If all, if all you ever do, if the only thing I ever hear you talk about is, is money and, and, and sports and, and politics, listen to me, listen to me. Your, your, your mouth is going to reveal what's in your heart. Your mouth will reveal what your God is. Come on, if all you ever do is talk about the things of this world and never talk about the things of God... All right, I said I'm not preaching. Teach, teach, teach. Someone asked, well, what's the difference between preaching and teaching? Well, preaching, you, you have to yell to make your point, okay? 
So look at it. Verse 35, the good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth what? Evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will come and give an account for every careless word that they speak, for by your words they will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Hear me today. I can tell you exactly what you're going to release into the earth in 2023. I can tell you exactly what you're going to birth this year. Are you ready? It's it's not deep. It's not very theological. I mean, anybody in this room can understand what I'm about to tell you. I can tell you exactly what you're going to release into this earth this year by what is inside of you right now. We can sit here and shout all day long that we want revival to be birthed into the earth in 2023, but I want to know, is revival in you? You can talk about you want the glory of the Lord to flood the earth, but is the glory of the Lord in you? Whatever's in you is what you're going to release this year. What is birthed in you or from within you is dependent upon the treasure that is deposited into you. What Jesus was saying there in, in the Gospel of Matthew is this, and it's very simple. He wasn't a deep teacher either. You could understand it unless you had a pharisaical spirit. Then you never knew what he was talking about. But it was very simple, and that was this. He said, if you have good deposited in you, guess what's going to come out of your life? Good things. If you have bad deposited into you, guess what's going to come out of your life? Bad fruit. What is he trying to say? What I'm trying to drive home right now, and that is this. The deposit in you determines the nature of what is going to be birthed through you. That's why you better watch out who you let lead you. You better watch out who you let speak into you. You better watch out who you, what you read, and, and you better watch out who you listen to. I've been getting text messages this week. I'm going there. <laughs> and here's the text messages. Pastor, who's this Greg Locke guy? This movie coming out. And I wanted to be real spiritual for the first part of the week and reply back, I don't know. And then I realized I'm a shepherd. I have a job to know. So I started researching this guy. I'm going to do it. I'm going there. You know, this Greg Locke pastor guy is a jerk. <laughs> Feel it suck out of the room? He left his wife and three months later married his administrative assistant who he was having an affair with while he was married. Okay. Y'all want me to go a little deeper? He cusses from the pulpit. He cusses from the pulpit. I don't care if he's pro-Trump. Listen to me. I don't care if he's conservative. I'm telling you right now. How many of you would be okay if your pastor had an affair with his secretary and I left her and her girls and I sent them off somewhere to take care of themselves? How many of you would be okay if I cussed from the pulpit? You would leave the first cuss word out of my mouth. Why? Because you're not going to align yourself with stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you right now, you better be careful what you allow deposit it into your life there I said it be careful now y'all do what you want to do but I ain't following an adulterer that calls himself a pastor well pastor don't you believe in come on please save me you better be careful because what you allow deposited is what's going to be birthed. Are y'all getting this? So, call me old school, but I have no desire to follow a ministry. And, and here another thing. This whole movie, Pastor Colby, since you were one of the people that text me. <laughs> and did I not reply and say, you know, I really don't know enough to make an opinion an opinion so I'd know better not to speak on something that I don't know what I was that not my reply and then what was it two or three days later I replied back I'm like okay now I've got an opinion 
Because the whole movie is on casting out demons, which, by the way, him and, and, I'm not, and another one that's part of that movie believes Christians could be demon-possessed. I don't need that false doctrine in my life. Hear me today. If there's a preacher that believes a Christian can have the Holy Ghost and the devil living in the same temple, I don't need you to tell me what the Word of the Lord says. I don't, I'm not aligning with that. And they're making a movie, brother, on casting demons out. Last I remembered, when the disciples were excited about demons being subject to their name, Jesus said, quit rejoicing that demons are subject to your name, but rejoice that your name's been written in the Lamb's book of life. I told my wife, I said, I'm not saying it from the pulpit. If people ask me, I will give them a pastoral opinion. Some of you did. And I told her, I said, I'm not saying it. And she said, you will. <laughs> it didn't take me five minutes into the sermon. I'm just, I'm just telling you, what you allow in determines what's coming out this year. Are you hearing me today? Be careful. Be careful. Church, be careful. Trying to prepare you as we go into a greater move of God because people get weird in moves of God. Okay. <laughs> Somebody say, go on. You know, it's interesting because we're made up of spirit, soul, and body. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, front row, y'all all related to me. Be quiet or I'm putting you on the back row front row here laughing like, huh, look at him. He closed his... I'm a little off today, but I've been off for seven days. When you have the encounter that I had last week, I mean, my praying has been different, everything. I mean, I, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Amen. Y'all wonder why am I walking around and stuff? Because I can't stand still. Glory to God. What was I going to say? Yeah, spirit, soul, and body. We're made up of spirit, soul, and body. Your body houses your spirit and your soul. Okay? Isn't it interesting, though, your body is what is responsible to guard your spirit and soul? Because your spirit and your soul doesn't have gateways, but your body does. Okay? Your spirit is naked without its body. Your soul is unprotected without the shell of the body. The body, God gave the body to house the spirit, and in that body he gave gateways. And you know what a gate is? A gate is, is, is security. The purpose of a gate, the reason I have a gate is, a gate's not like a fence. A fence just keeps everything out. If I have a fence, I can't get out and I can't get in. But when I have a gate in that fence, I can determine what comes in and what com goes out. Are you hearing me today? When I have a gate, I can determine who I want to let into my yard and who I don't want in. Amen. So I can tell you, hey, the gate's open. Just come on back. We're in the backyard. Or I can put a padlock on that thing and say, no, you can't come in my backyard because the gate determines who I let in and who I let out. Some of you letting everybody in. you letting every voice in. You're letting every thought in, you're letting every theology in, you're letting every teaching in, you have a responsibility, I shouldn't have to do this for you, you ought to be spiritually mature enough to be able to do it yourself, guard the gates, guard the gates church, guard the gates, so what are our gates, we have an eye gate, oh be careful little eyes what you see, y'all know that one? The eye gate. You know what the eyes are? They're like a lens on a camera. They capture a picture and they deposit it onto the film of your spirit. Think about that. The eyes are like a, the lens on a camera. They have the ability to, to zoom in on an image, capture that image, deposit it into your spirit. That's why David said, David said, you know, he'll not set any evil thing before his eyes. Why? Because he realized that the eyes were a gate in his body to protect his spirit man. And he says, I'm going to be careful what I allow my eyes to see. I'm not going to watch anything evil. I'm not going to put anything evil before my eyes. Why? Because I'm trying to protect my spirit. Are you here? hearing me today, church. I'll set no wicked thing before my eyes. The eye gate. Then there's the, the ear gate. 
And you know this one's important because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing cometh by the You know that verse. Say it with me. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Say it one more time for those that just learned it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you listen to the word of God, it grows good fruit in your life. And the opposite of that is true. If you listen to negativity and you listen to fear and you listen to the voices of anxiety and you listen to the voices of discouragement, guess what it's going to do? The opposite of what the Word of God's going to do. It's going to produce bad fruit in your life. That's why you got to be careful what you allow into your ears. Y'all get with me. I know some of you still lost on Greg Locke back there. You say, Pastor, I can't believe you called someone out from the pulpit. Read your Bible. I'm told to call people out from the pulpit. Amen. It's a responsibility. But stay with me. Eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate. You know, often we only think the mouth is just there to let words out. But did you know the mouth does more than talking? Mm hmm. You know what else the mouth does? You eat with your mouth. Glory to God. You eat with your mouth. In other words, the mouth isn't only a gate that lets words out. Out of the heart the mouth speaketh, Jesus said. But the mouth is also a gate that lets food in. Now stay with me for just a second because you know this verse in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. It says this, life and death are in the power of the tongue and you will eat the fruit thereof. What's in the power of your tongue? Life and death. What's, what, what you speak with your mouth. He says not only is there power for life and death in those words, but you're going to also now eat the fruit thereof. In other words, what you put out of your mouth and whatever you speak is also what you're going to begin to consume. Are you hearing me today? If all you do is speak sickness, you're going to consume sickness. My God. If all you ever do is speak fear, you're going to consume fear. Some of you all, I mean, some people, all you ever, you get around them, all they talk about is, well, my daddy died of cancer, my granddaddy died of cancer, heart disease runs in my family, my dad had his heart attack at 43, and I'm 42 and a half, so I'm probably getting ready to have a heart attack. I'm like, yep, you probably are. You're probably going to die, too, because you just spoke it. You're going to eat the fruit thereof. That's the word of God, church. Listen, if your daddy had a heart attack at 42 and your parents had cancer and your grandparents had cancer and it runs in your bloodline, you need to decree and declare God's word over your life that even though it may have happened to my daddy and even though it may have happened to my granddaddy and even though it may have happened to my great-granddaddy, it stops with me because I decree and declare that by his stripes I am healed. I decree and declare that I will have long life. I will be satisfied. Come on, somebody. Whatever you speak is going to be the fruit you eat there. Thereof. That's why we all about decreeing and declaring in this place. Because I know if I speak the word of God, I'm going to eat the benefits of the word of God. Come on. Oh, my word, I feel that today. Everybody say the mouth gate. I mean, think about the power of the mouth. Everything that exists is because of words. The earth you're standing on is because God said... When you go home tonight and you look up at the stars in the sky, they're all there because God spoke and breathed them out of his mouth. And he named them. Everything. Everything. God said, let there be. And there was. God said, day two, let there be. And there was. Day three, God said, let there be. And there was. Everything that exists came about by words. It was the verbal activity of God that literally decreed our existence. What is your point, Pastor? My point is this. Your words have power to either create or to destroy. Let me show you something. Take your Bibles again. Turn to Romans chapter 4. And don't miss that note. My words have power to either create or to destroy. But look at this, Romans chapter 4 and verse 13. For the promise, everybody say the promise, to Abraham and his offspring that he would be the heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So what are we dealing with here? A promise. 
What are we talking about this morning? Things that God wants to do in the earth, in Little Rock, in your family, in our church this year, the promises, the prophetic words, the plans, the purposes, all the things that God has in store, the things that are prepared. That's a lot of words that start with P right there. The things that are prepared, prophesied, promised, planned, and purposed for your life. That's a five-point sermon, preachers. Come on, young preachers. I just gave you five words that start with P. Amen. Right there, you got a five-point sermon to go out and preach. But here's what we've got. We've got a promise. Abraham's got this promise. We find out that it came through the righteousness of faith, but look at verse 14, for it is by the adherence of the law who are to be their heirs. Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. Verse 16, underline it in your Bible. That is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, Abraham, who's the father of us all. As it's written, verse 17, very important verse here, as it's written... I have made you the father of many nations. That's the promise. Before it ever happened, that was the plan. I've made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and he calls into existence the things that do not exist. Words. He calls into existence the things that do not exist. So what did not exist in regards to this promise very simple if you were to keep reading you would come across I think verse 19 where it gives us two important pieces of information that that really um, you've got this promise and, and and verse 19 gives us some information that is not helping the promise and basically what you read in verse 19 two things one Abraham's a hundred years old anybody in this room a hundred didn't think so Anybody 80? Can you imagine having a child 20 years from now because God's got a promise over your life? The second thing that's wrong with this promise is Sarah, Sarah's womb is dead. I think verse 19 is that, yeah, says she was barren. The barrenness of Sarah's womb. So God has a promise that Abraham's going to have a child and, 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 and all the nations of the earth is going to be blessed through this. And, and we all know that story, but we have two big issues here, and that is Abraham's 100 years old, number one, and number two, Sarah's womb is dead. But then, going back to verse 17, God said that I have the ability and I have the power to speak things that are not as though they were so. Things that don't even exist, with my mouth, I can make them exist. How many of you know when God created the heavens and the earth, there was nothing and out of nothing became something because God spoke it and because God said it. God took nothing, he said something, and he made something. I'm here telling you today, friend, that's the power of your words. You better be careful. The gate of your body that houses your spirit because what is going to be birthed in your life may very well be dependent on what you're talking about right now, what you're saying right now, what you're decreeing right now, what you're declaring right now. I want to know what are you saying right now because if I can find out what's coming out of your mouth I can tell you what your year is going to look like mm. that's why we got to speak God's word over our promise it may seem dead it may seem barren it may seem like this is never going to happen how many of you got a promise from God come on I want to see your hand how many of you got a prophetic word over your life so God's get, how many know God's got a plan and a purpose for you? Come on, wave at me. I want to know. All of us. And sometimes it seems like those things are dead and they're barren. That's when we need to use that mouth gate and we need to speak over those things. Amen. Be careful what you speak over your life. I don't know why I'm camping out here. I didn't plan to. But be careful what you speak over your church. Come on, somebody. Be careful what you do at noon today. Sitting around the, you won't be out by noon, but pretend you were. Amen. <laughs> this, this is tag church, right? If you're visiting today, this is tag. Amen. People say, well, why do we have a clock back there? I don't know. It's a thorn in my flesh. When you're preaching, 60 seconds go fast. Maybe not where you're sitting <laughs> when you're up here. Amen. So I'm talking about how deposits are made in your life and how they determine what's birthed through us. So here's where I wanted to give you the three things. Write these down real quick. Two I'm gonna hit real fast. The second one we'll spend the rest of our time on. Number one, talking about how things are deposited in your life. You ready? 
Ready to write? Number one, God deposits things in our lives. John 3, 27, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing unless it's been given to him from heaven. I want you to think about that. Every gifting, talent, ability, calling, anointing, whatever it is that you have, and that maybe some of those things that you were born with, or, or, or maybe not even born with, but God deposited in your life, those things aren't there because you were good, or because you were talented, or you were able, but because God put something in your life. And every talent, gifting, ability, whatever it is that's not in your life, but you have a desire for it to be in your life, that desire is there because God's put a desire there within you. Are you hearing me today? So if you have a desire to learn how to play the keyboard and one day lead worship, it's not because necessarily you want to play keyboard. It's because God's put a desire in you and now you got to do something with the desire that God's put in your life. Otherwise, you're going to live another 40 years should the Lord tarry and you're going to still have the desire to play a piano and still never taken a lesson to learn to play the piano. Just because God put something in you doesn't mean you don't have something to do with the desire that he put in side of you. Okay. Number two. That was an easy one. Number two, not so much. Talking about deposits in our life. Number two, write it down. Other people can deposit things in your life. Other people. Kind of hit on this in the beginning of the message. Who are you associated with? Other people can deposit things in your life. Who do you spend all your time with? Start looking at the people you spend all your time with. That's who you're becoming. Mm. Well, pastor, I'm married to them. <laughs> well, I can't help you with that one, sis. Man. <laughs> you're stuck. You take care of you, but not them, right? Who do you allow to speak into your life? Who are you listening to? Who do you learn from? Who do you serve under to gain influence from? Who are you serving? Y'all ain't helping me. You better be careful. You better be careful because the people we're associated with will either deposit, according to Jesus, good things or evil things into our life. I told you I'm not preaching today. I just want to help you today. I'll be back up in the pulpit screaming and sweating next week. Come back. Amen. Maybe not. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, bad company corrupts good morals. Every mama knows what I'm talking about in this place. Little Johnny goes to hang out with little Eddie. Little Johnny's the perfect little child. Eddie's a heathen. Johnny hangs out with Eddie for a few weeks, few months, and guess what? Johnny becomes a heathen. Because it doesn't say good company helps bad company. No, it says bad company. Listen, that's why you can't missionary date. Pastor, what's missionary date? Listen to me, single person. If they're not saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the man of your dreams, spiritually speaking, you want them to be, don't think you can date them and make them become that. Because more than likely, you're going to become what they are because it never works the other way. It usually works bad company corrupts good morals. So can I just talk to the moms and dads in the room? You better be careful who your kids hang out with. My kids know there are certain people they can't be friends with. They know why. And listen, just sometimes because I don't get a good vibe about them. Well, dad, they're a really good person. I don't care. I don't think they are. Hey, Amen. You ain't going to their house. You ain't staying the night with them. You ain't gonna, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not having sleepovers with them. Why? Because I'm protecting my kids who don't know how to protect themselves yet. Moms and dads, listen to me. We better protect our kids from bad company. Otherwise, we're going to see what we allow our kids to be around around that's who they will become yes Jesus oh man I feel the glory let me show you something in uh, Deuteronomy turn there real quick 34 Deuteronomy 34 I got it written down verse 9 you know in Jesus's culture Jesus sat and they all stood did you know that? <laughs> Rabbis sat and the, the crowd stood. <clears throat> We'd drop down to 25 people <laughs> in attendance quickly, wouldn't we? <laughs> How many of you in Deuteronomy 34 say amen? amen? 
See, what you read about in the book of Deuteronomy is this relationship between two leaders, Moses and Joshua, right? And God established this relationship. He set this relationship up between Moses and Joshua. And God told Moses basically to go and establish Joshua as the new leader. And here's where we are in Deuteronomy 34. And what's happening in this passage is basically the anointing on Moses' life is about to get transferred onto Joshua's life. The leadership calling on Moses' life is about to be placed on Joshua's life. So Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 says, And Joshua, the son of Nun, the only person in the Bible who had no parents, the son of Nun. Amen. It was a joke. He was full of the spirit of wisdom. What was he full of? Turn to your neighbor and say, what are you full of? Yeah. Now, who was full of wisdom? Joshua, the son of Nun. But why was he full of wisdom? Look at it. For Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him, and they did as the Lord had commanded Moses. That was back in the old days when people actually listened to their pastor. Instead of sat there like, I don't agree. I don't care if you agree. Whoopie do. I don't agree with myself half the time. I'm like, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Hear me. Put that verse back up there, please, if you will. Because uh, I think there's something very important I want everyone to see here. Joshua's full of wisdom. Why? There's a key word there, for. Something had happened in Joshua's life at some point when Moses came and Moses did what? He laid his hands on him. When Moses laid his hands on Joshua, what he did is he imparted or he deposited, it's the word we're using today, he deposited the spirit of wisdom so that Joshua could effectively lead. Basically it was this, there's about to be a transfer of power, there's about to be a new leader, so what's going to happen is I'm going to take what's on me and I'm going to lay my hands on you, Joshua and I'm going to put what's on my life and I'm going to put it on your life because you ain't going to be able to lead without this wisdom. You got a lot of people, you got a lot of cliques, you got a lot of opinions, you got a lot of, you got a lot of rebels in the camp, you got a lot of this, you got a lot of that. You're going to need wisdom to guide and to lead. So I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm going to impart or deposit something in your life, praise God. How many of you in this room believe that God is still in the business of imparting spiritual gifts into our life? And I do believe that 2023 is the year to, that, that, that we need to get around some people who's going to deposit some good things into our life. Some people who's going to lay hands on us and release some good things into our life. That's why t this afternoon I'm starting a class for those who feel called into full-time ministry. And I don't really have any agenda in that class other than to deposit stuff. Things that I think will help you be a leader. Things that will help you be a pastor or whatever God's called you to be. Why? I just want to take some Sunday afternoons for the next several weeks and just start depositing things into your life. Are you hearing me? Now turn over to 2 Timothy real quick, chapter 1, because there's another example. I gave you the Old Testament, and I'm running out of time. and I, I, I preached my intro, so now I'm in my body, and I'm, I'm closing with my body is how this is working. And every preacher knows what's happening right now. Amen. If you're not a preacher, you don't know what's happening, but I did the wrong thing. I preached my intro, the gates. And so now we're to the body, the meat, and, and i got to move quick because it's 1151. But you need to see this New Testament example. I gave you Moses and Joshua in the old. Now in the new, look at Paul and Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, look at verse number 3, please. 2 Timothy chapter one in verse number three. It says, I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, verse four. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy, verse five. I am reminded, and Paul's talking to Timothy here, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well. Stop right there for just a second because what Paul is seeing in Timothy's life is he's saying, Timothy, I, I, I notice that there is a, and I'm reminded and, and, and I'm encouraged by a deposit of sincere faith that was, that was placed in your life. And, and, and let me remind you, Timothy, where you got that sincere faith from. You got it from your 
mother and from your grandmother. Thank God for godly mothers, godly grandmothers, and godly parents who impart and deposit godly things in their children and their grandchildren, yes? So he says, first of all, you have this deposit of a sincere faith. And let me, before I read the next verse, verse 6, let me just say this. If you're in this room and you have a godly mother or a godly father, hear me today. You ought to do yourself a favor and listen to them. Verse 6. I thought the moms and dads would at least say amen, but y'all are done with that too, okay. Verse 6. For this reason, I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. And how is it in you? Through the laying of on of hands. Old and New Testament examples today. Joshua had spiritual gifts in his life because Moses laid his hands on him. Timothy had spiritual gifts or uh, Paul called it the gift of God in your life. And how did he have it? Through the laying on of hands. Everybody say impartation. When hands are laid on people, an impartation takes place. Listen, when we lay hands on people, it's not just so we can rub your shoulder and say, oh, you know, God bless you. No, there's something being released. There's something being activated. There's something being imparted. That's why you need to be careful who you let lay hands on you. It's also why you need to be careful who you lay your hands on. Lay hands on no man suddenly, the Bible says. Laying on of hands is a very elementary teaching of Scripture. Hebrew writer says actually the laying on of hands is an elementary uh, teaching of Scripture, meaning this ain't complicated. Impartation, transference of spirits, tra- uh, transition of anointings, giftings, callings, this is not, it's elementary according to the Hebrew writer. It's, it's very, very basic Bible teaching, if you will, but we have these little secrets that tell us to be careful not to lay your hands on people suddenly. You better hear me today. Impartation happens happens through the laying on of hands, so be careful. That's why we have an altar team here that wear lanyards, because if somebody has a lanyard around their neck, you can trust that they've been qualified, they've been taught, they know what they're doing. And if they don't have a a lanyard, it doesn't mean they're not qualified, it just means they're not serving on that team. But what you need to do if you don't know that person is be like, hey, you know, who are you? Before, don't let anybody just lay their hands on you. Amen. Now, if, 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 you know, if John's not on the altar team, and, but I know John, and John wants to pray for me, I'm going to let John pray for me because I know John, and I trust John. But there's people in this room, I don't know who you are, and I don't want you laying hands on me. I can't get no help up in here. I'm getting ready to lay hands on a bunch of people today. We're going to impart fire and anointings and giftings and callings. Amen. And laying on of hands, guys, is very basic. Read your Bible. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus laid his hands on little children and he blessed them. Laid his hands and blessed them. In Luke 4, they brought people to Jesus who had various diseases and he laid his hands on them and he released the gift of healing and he healed them. In Acts chapter 8, Peter and John laid their hands on the believers who were in Samaria and those believers were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. Why? Because somebody laid their hands on them. Throughout the book of Acts, when men and women were ordained and called to preach and sent out to proclaim the gospel, they were brought before the presbytery of the church and the presbytery of the church would lay their hands on them before sending them out and before preaching. And what were they doing? They were releasing and imparting wisdom and power and anointing and leadership. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 11 said, For I long to see you. I long to come and travel to you. I long to be with you so that I might impart some spiritual gift to strengthen you. I'm telling you, if this is delivery year, then first it's got to be deposit year. If this is the year we're going to give birth to the supernatural and the things of God. We've got to get impregnated by the Spirit and one way we're going to do it is through the laying on of hands. Somebody shout yes in this place. So the laying on of hands is a transference of the anointing or spiritual gift. And as I said, listen please, impartation's not weird. It's a very elementary teaching. Matter of fact, it's so elementary, everybody in this place ought to be imparting something. Come on, there's a lot of movement in this room. Unless you're about to pee your pants, stay seated. I'm shutting this movement down. It's a distraction. A lot of in and out, in and out all over the building. Okay, please, please. If you're interrupting me, you're interrupting the people around you. Stop moving. If it's an emergency, move. If not, sit. Understand? Understand? Thank you. Tired of it. 
too much movement in the room. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to deposit something. Too much movement. Calm it down. Understand? Thank you. All right. I told you number three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with quick. But there's one more thing I want to say on this second point about impartation. And that was this. We all should be imparting something. We all should be depositing something into somebody else. I mean, think about it for this minute, for a minute. How many of you are saved? How many of you, your salvation cost you? Your salvation cost you? Last I checked, it's free. It wasn't a trick question. I know discipleship cost you something, yes. But how many of you paid for your salvation? Okay, just checking. So you got it for what? Free. Thank God. Thank God for the blood. You got it for free. Jesus said, freely as you've received, freely give. That means this, if you've received salvation for free, you're already responsible to start imparting something. Really, evangelism at its, at its, at its basic understanding is impartation because evangelism is, I receive something, now I want to go and impart it into something else. Well, pastor, I've not been to Bible college. Well, pastor, I've never read a book on evangelism. Well, pastor, John and Sammy have never done an evangelism class teaching me how to evangelize. I don't care if you've only been saved for 17 seconds, you have something in in 17 seconds called your testimony, you already have something to deposit to somebody else. You don't need to go to Bible school. You don't need to have reverend in front of your name. You don't need to be ordained, friend. If you have received anything, you're responsible to deposit that into somebody else's life. Freely you've received, freely give. So here in a minute, as we wrap this message up, I'm going to invite anyone that wants to here in a second to come up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a bottle of oil and we're going to smear that on you. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to rub some oil on some foreheads today. And here's why. Here's why. To understand impartation, you have to understand the anointing. Okay? And basically, impartation or, or anointing, I should say, in the Bible means a smearing. That word anointing in the Bible literally means a smearing. You know this. In Scripture, oil was symbolic of the Holy Spirit. So when a prophet, bring me my oil, Jay, it's in my basket. When a, when a prophet or a priest would take the oil, stay right there. Face me. Turn around. Crystal, come hold my ring. Now I ain't going to do this to the rest of y'all. He's just my example. So don't be afraid, ladies. I'm not going to anoint your hair. <laughs> Raise your hands. See that? It, when a prophet or a priest would anoint, it literally means they would smear oil. Okay? And the, the, the purpose was this. Check this out, church. What the oil represented through anointing someone with it, it represented what is on me I'm going to share it, and I'm going to put it on you. That's why you got to be careful who you let lay their hands on you. It literally means, in the Hebrew, anoint to anoint somebody, anointing anoint, literally means to smear and to share what's on you and put it on someone else. So right now, Jay... By the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to smear this oil on you. And I say, Lord, whatever is in me, yes. 
that you want Jay to have, let it be on him in Jesus' name. Every leadership anointing, every preaching anointing, in the name of Jesus, every prophetic gift right now, the spirit of boldness. Come on, Jay, if you don't want all of it, you don't have to accept it, but what you want, freely I've received. I don't own yes. it, it's not mine, but I share it with you today in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, praise team, get up here real quick, singers, musicians. Everybody say smear. smear. Yeah, that's, that's what it means. Smear to the point of sharing. And it was always symbolic. It was really a, we'd probably call it like a, not a ritual, that's not the word I'm looking for, but a, a ceremony. It was a symbolic m moment. Where, where they could see, the people, the congregation could see the oil on one leader's life and then now it's smeared and it's placed on another leader's life. And it was symbolic for everybody that's seen it to go, to walk away and go, wow, what's on Moses is now on Joshua. What's on Paul is now on Timothy. Come on, somebody. The anointing of God is so, is so real and it's so... Uh, it's so powerful that literally it can be felt, it's tangible, it can be transmitted, it can be shared. In the Hebrew, it means to smear. In the Greek, metomadai is the Greek word for anointing, and it means to share with others. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to share some giftings in this place. And then finally... And I told you I was going to hit the last one like I hit the first one. Number three, write this down, then we're going to pray. We can deposit things in our own lives. Number one, God deposits things. Number two, other people deposits things. Number three, we can deposit things in our own lives. Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of, it the, out of it springs the issues of life. What that means is this, you can determine, church, what you deposit into your own life. You might want to play the piano like Pastor Josh plays the piano. And you might come up here in a minute and you might say, Pastor Josh, I want you to anoint me with oil today because I want that musical ability you have. And you know what? There is a slight chance, and I mean real slight, that you'll leave and go buy a piano and sit down and play double portion better than Pastor Josh. If it happens, that's going to be, can it happen? Yes, it can happen. Is it going to happen that way? Uh, probably not. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have to go learn how to play a piano. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You, you are responsible to deposit things into your own life. So we purposely put the deposit in our life by three things. Number one, studying the Word of God. Number two, spending time with certain people. And number three, receiving training in certain areas. It's that simple. You can't burst something if you're not already there. You're not going to release something if you don't already have it. You have a desire to preach one day? What are you waiting on? Start studying now. Start learning how to do that now you have a is there a God deposit in you that just one day you want to you feel like you're gonna you're gonna lead or 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 open and lead a a, a women's rehab center a spirit-filled women's you just you feel that God spoke that to you somebody prophesied it you have a desire in your heart and and one day you know you're gonna you're gonna have this property and you can already see it you've been given dreams you know what the house looks like and one day you're gonna have a house full of women coming off drugs that you're you're pouring into their life I, I'm telling you friend I rejoice with that but I want to know what are you doing right now are you serving a rehab center somewhere are you going and volunteering? If that dream and that desire is in you and you ain't doing nothing about it, what do you? Come on, somebody help me here. 
Don't tell me you feel called to be a pastor of a church and you ain't ever spent any time with your pastor. Don't tell me one day you're going to pastor and preach when you ain't ever sit, you come up and say, Pastor, can I come and sit in board meetings? I just want to learn how to run a board meeting. Pastor, if you're ever going to the hospital, call me. I'd like to go because I want to learn how to pray with the sick. Pastor, next funeral you're doing, could I go and visit the family with you? Because I want to learn that process. Hear me. Don't tell me about your big dreams you have one day if you're not doing something right now to see those things in your life become the reality of your destiny. Come on, give the Lord praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet all over this room. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Two things I want to say before I lay my hands on anybody else. Number one, understand Two things that happened this morning I want you to understand. Number one, it is your pastor's responsibility to be the shepherd, the under-shepherd of this house. If you didn't like what I warned you about, that's okay. I, I'm not asking you to agree with me. My wife doesn't agree with me half the time. Right? That's part of life. I love you. If you choose to go watch the movie and... And what, I'm not, I'm not going to be at, like at the movie theater that night like checking to see who's there. I'm not, no. I'm like, I don't care, honestly. I've warned you. What you do with it is your business. Y'all understand. How many of you know I do stuff like that because I love your soul? If I didn't you love your soul, I wouldn't care. I'm just telling you, my reasoning is this. I wouldn't follow a leader like that. If your pastor was like, like that man, none of you would go to this church. None of you. So that's why I have to warn you. Number two, it's time for discipline in the house again. All the movement needed to be dealt with. The in and the out. The enemy is working overtime to distract today because he knows what is about to be released in this place is going to be a seed that's going to give birth to your destiny. And that may not be for everybody, but it's for some people in this room right now. Come on, lift up a hand to the Lord right now in this place. Father, thank you for your presence and your power. Thank you for your anointing, Holy Ghost. Lord, right now I pray, God, that what is on this, on this, on this, the mantle that's on this church, God, would be a mantle that's imparted on every family, every, indi every individual right now, Father God. I pray, Lord, for those who have desires stirring in their heart to one day do something great for you, God. And I don't even know what those desires are for everybody in this room. There's different desires. There's different God dreams. There's different callings. There's different anointings. There's different giftings. But God, you know the plans and purposes you have for every person in this room right now. And I thank you for what you're going to release in the spirit in this place in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you're going to release in the spirit right now we're going to follow the Lord and we're going to pray here for just a moment and then when we get ready to end y'all stick around please because we're going to baptize a few people I know the altar team has a training luncheon today and we'll head to that right after service but I just feel right now so compelled to impart and to release some things into some people's life so here's what I'm going to do right now I want Pastor Josh, Pastor Dennis, Pastor Kobe, I want you guys to just line up across the front of this. Josh, you just get right here. I want our pastoral staff. I'm going to take this oil and let's just hand it on down. Let everybody get a little dab on their finger. I want everybody in this room to pray in the Holy Ghost for 30 seconds right now. Come on, if you're filled with the Spirit, pray in the Holy Ghost. Na 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 na
Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. All right, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen real quick. If you're in this room, don't move yet. Listen to the instructions, okay, and then we'll, we'll, we'll all move. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand right over on this end, and if you feel called to some kind of leadership anointing, if you feel like you'll be a fi in five-fold ministry one day, or, or already are, and you just want an increase, you feel like God's calling you to preach, to pastor, or a leadership anointing, okay, in the, in the church, leadership anointing in the church, I want you to come right over in this area. In a minute, you're going to come to this area. I want to pray for the leaders, the lions in the room, okay? The leaders of leaders even. All right. If you're here and you desire an impartation of some kind of creative arts ministry today, maybe it's music, worship, art, and you feel like the area of your, your, your promise and the area of your destiny is in the area of creative arts, worship, okay, photography, media, those different things that God may be speaking to you, I want you to come and stand in front of Pastor Josh so he can anoint you with oil. We're not going to pray over every person long. We literally want to just share. We want to impart. We want to pr put the oil on you today. Symbolic of what's transferring to your life, okay? If you're, if you're in this room and you have a uh, not so much leadership anointing in the church, but more so in the business world, okay? Your destiny is what God wants to do out in this world through business, through leadership, okay? Through, uh, through leading people, I want you to come over to Pastor Dennis's area. He's going to release that in your life right now. And then finally, and Pastor Kobe, I know we would think, you know, the obvious here. And, and, and that is one thing. If you're here and you are 18 years or younger, I want you to come and let Pastor Kobe lay his hands on you today, okay? And then one more area, and I think maybe we can get it right here in the middle. Crystal, would you come and just take some of this oil on my hands? Stand right here. I want you to release an impartation of healing today. If there's anybody in this room needs healing in their body. Now, you might hit different of these spots, and you can allow any of your spiritual leaders to, uh, you, you can get all of us to pray for you if you like. You go to one, then go to the other. But I want, if one of them areas apply to you, and I know they may not apply to everybody in the room, but if they do, I want you to go to, to, to those areas. Now, if, if you're not going to an area this morning, I want you to just, just pray right there at your seat. Uh, and, and if we didn't specifically call out your area, but you want prayer today, we want to pray for anybody and everybody. There's enough of us up here. We'll do that this morning. But let's all be in this attitude of prayer, okay? All right, I'm going to get my spot. I'm going to turn you loose, church. Go ahead and make your way to the altar today. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can do so by clicking right here. And also, here is another message that will bless you. Just click right here. Thank you, and we pray that we will see you again here at Tag Church. God bless you.